wherever you go, of course you're gonna have some bad experiences. It can't all be, you know, ponies and unicorns, fantastic. I totally agree that this is a feeling that most foreigners coming to Japan will feel. They knew what they were doing. Racism. Okay, those were uh, Dan's five points. Now it's time for my five points. Feeling left out in a conversation. So um, this is more a personal problem, not really something that I can, you know, society can change or whatever. This is something that relates really just to me. Because of my lack of experience with the Japanese language, when I first came to Japan, <sighs> I began life in Japan not really able to understand what other people were saying at natural speed. If I wasn't speaking with someone, like one-on-one, -on -one, who really understood how bad my Japanese was, then I probably wasn't understanding the conversation. This was especially true in group conversations. People would just be rattling off words left and right and phrases that I didn't know and I was just struggling to keep up with what they were saying. I could not catch any of it. And for the first 11 months in Japan, particularly the first four or five months about, I was just so depressed because I realized I know nothing. I know nothing. I know nothing. And it kind of made me question all my life choices and so forth, and you know. Eventually I would go on to get better and improve and although I, I still kind of fall silent in group conversations just because I'm I'm really trying to focus on everything that's being said and trying to catch you know the phrases and the words that people are throwing out and I'm like People assume you are more fluent than you actually are later on when I was in Japan I would eventually get better at speaking and I'd get more fluent in Japanese and when I would first meet someone and start talking to them in Japanese they would assume that I could understand like 99% of what they were saying so they would just go off at native speed using all these words of vocabulary that I don't know and, and I'm just like but what really bugged me wasn't that they assumed my proficiency what really bugged me was that after they assumed my proficiency and started speaking at, you know, their native speed, I had to really kind of, I had to kind of admit to them and say like, ah, uh, actually, what? <laughs> I'm not as good as you think I am. Either that or they would kind of realize that I wasn't as good as they thought by my face, by my facial expression and just state of confusion. Would I like to make people think that I'm Jozu? Of course I would! But I'm not, and when that kind of thing happens, it really just reaffirms to me and, and really gets it into my head that I'm, I'm terrible. I am so far from being fluent in Japanese. I have a long, long way to go. And you know, that feeling really sucks. Number three, other foreigners. So this kind of goes back to what I was saying um, at that point of racism that Dan was talking about. I have no problems with any Japanese. All the Japanese that I've met have, well, you, most, most of the Japanese that I've met have been really great, really caring, loving people, just so Japanese. <laughs> I love it. My only issue was with the people who weren't Japanese in Japan. Like I said before, um, a few of them were pretty racist and open about it. They had some pretty, they believed pretty strongly some stereotypes about Americans, particularly uh, white American men, and they really lashed out at me for it. Again, like I said before, I won them over eventually. That's a whole nother video. I'll make it later. Number four, drinking. So this isn't really a complaint against Japan, but rather a complaint against drinking in general. I'm bringing it up in this video about Japan because the issues that I've had with drinking in general happened in Japan. 
or while I was in Japan. So in Japan, it is normal to go to izakaya or a bar or some kind of pub with your friends just to hang out. And practically all of my friends over there in Japan drink. I don't drink, and that's a personal choice of mine. But whenever, you know, we would just go out and hang out, there would be times when they would get super drunk. And when people get super drunk and kind of wasted, and you're you're not, and you're just you're sitting there sober, like, what are you doing? You know? It can get pretty annoying. I hate babying people, especially super drunk people. And I do it, and I go out, and I don't drink, and I choose to remain sober so that I can help them, make sure they're not hurt, and stuff like that. But it's just, it's really annoying, and I mean, sometimes it's funny. Like, sometimes it's hilarious, and I'll just, I'll just laugh the whole time, but it's mostly annoying. Number five, business. In Japan, everyone is super busy. If they're not busy with school or work, they're busy at a part-time job or extracurricular activities or a juku, a cram school that they go to after school. Japan has one of the world's most notorious school and work lives in terms of busyness. And I knew that, I studied it before coming to Japan, but it was just so evident and it was almost scary how busy some people actually were. There would be times when my friends would just not be able to hang out because they had other responsibilities or they were too busy. In America, it's much more lax and I'm used to that, I like that. I know this is probably something I can't really formally complain against because you know, it's a cultural difference, it's a societal thing, but if it were to change, I'm all for it. If not, shogunai. I actually knew a guy who was going out with one of my uh, fellow study abroad exchange student friends and he was just so busy all the time. After class, he would go to his dance club practice and he would practice dance uh, for a few hours. And then after that, he would either go to his lab or whatever and work or he would go to some other thing or he would go to some other meeting or whatever. He wouldn't get home until like one, two, sometimes 3 a.m. in the morning. And my friend would be waiting up for him that whole time. And as soon as he'd get home, they'd have a few hours together until he would have to get up at like seven or eight or whatever for his morning classes. And then the cycle just repeats and repeats. And you could just see the sadness in her face. She was lonely all the time. She had a lot of personal time because of that, but she still wanted to be around him. They were, they were koibito. They were in a relationship, like. Well, that's it. As you can see, all my complaints aren't really that bad at all. Honestly, I had an amazing time in Japan and I can't wait to go back. Thankfully, some of these complaints that I had can be changed based on my effort alone. And the ones that can't be changed through my effort, well, I don't really worry about them too much. In general, I'm a very tolerant person and can handle pretty much anything. But what do you guys think? I want to hear your thoughts. Do you share similar experiences or do you have similar stories? Have you lived abroad? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching. Bye bye. Peace, guys.